Well, it seems that a lot of this course is about links, doesn't it? But that's only because links are so critical to search engine optimization. You may be lucky. Perhaps your site can rank well without too much link work. That certainly happens depending on the degree of competition you're facing in the search results for your keywords. But that happy situation doesn't always occur. In many cases, competition is fierce and you really need more links. So in this section of the course, I'm going to teach you a few more ways to get links, more advanced methods perhaps, and also things that are perhaps a little sensitive. Things like getting links from online discussion groups and forums, which can get you in trouble, but can also really help if done right. And things like guest blogging, something that's got a bad name in recent years, but that can also work well in some cases. You'll also learn about the concept of link bait, building something that other people just want to link to, and the awkward question of should you buy links, and why the search engines hate purchased links. In this lesson, we're going to talk about something I used to call community marketing. These days it would probably be regarded as social marketing or social media marketing. But I've been online and working in online marketing so long, I sometimes had to make up my own terms in the early days. I'm going to talk about how you can use discussion groups and forums of various kinds to help with your SEO and with your online marketing at the same time. More than a decade ago, I had a new client come to me to learn about SEO. He knew nothing about the subject, but was already selling more than a million dollars worth of parts and accessories for a particular model of sports car, and he was doing it through community marketing. His essential model was this. He knew all the forums and discussion groups related to the particular car his business focused on, and he was an active participant in these groups. He was very careful not to be pushy, but when somebody posted a message saying, hey, where can I buy X or Y for my car, he would politely respond, and link to his website. Eventually, he told me, he became so well known in the groups that other members were pointing to his site before he had a chance to do so. Now, this is more than just search engine optimization, of course. My client was getting plenty of business when people clicked through those links. But he also found that his site was rising in the search results because the search engines were seeing all those great links. So linking from forums to your site can be a very effective link building method and bring you traffic from the forums themselves, as long as you do it carefully. Here's how it could work for you. Let's say you sell rabbit hutches. The first thing you do is to figure out where all your potential buyers are hanging out, where the discussion groups are. That's easy enough to do. You want to search for things like rabbit forum or pet forum, rabbit discussion group, rabbit bulletin board, and so on. You're going to use broad keywords, not very specific. Rabbit, not rabbit hutches, for instance. There are also directories of discussion groups, such as thebiggestboards.com, 1001forums.com, and theforumfinder.org. You can find these forum directories by searching for the phrase forum directory. Another technique you might use is to combine your keywords with the names of common forum software systems, such as these. You might also try more precise searches. For instance, to find messages within forums, you could search for a specific term, such as buy rabbit hutch, along with the word forum or bulletin board. I found this page when I searched for the phrase buy rabbit hutch forum. You can see that it's a forum message about that very subject, someone looking for advice on buying a rabbit hutch. Spend a few minutes, an hour or two, and you'll usually find dozens, perhaps hundreds of discussion groups related to your subject area. It'll take some time to register for the various systems and you'll want to be organized. You might want to create a spreadsheet that contains all the data or use a password management program so that you can store all the information and log into each one quickly when necessary. Now, the goal is to get links in the systems pointing back to your website, of course, but you can't just go into the forums and post messages saying, hey, come to my website. That's the fastest way to get yourself banned from the groups. Rather, you need to be posting genuine, useful information. Actually, looking at the message we saw a moment ago, it looks to me very much like it was placed for SEO purposes. The link to the site is stacked with keywords, and the poster has only posted three messages to the board. I wouldn't be surprised if this person is masquerading as a genuine member when he's really just looking for places to put links. Still, as we look lower, we see that other people posting to the message thread seem to be real members. This one has posted more than 4,000 messages, 
and is rated as a forum VIP, which indicates he's for real. I'm not suggesting you post fake forum messages, but I am saying there's nothing wrong with posting messages in response to people with genuine useful advice. If you come off as an SEO link builder or as a pure marketer just pushing your products down people's throats, you're going to get thrown out of the forums. And you also shouldn't be using heavily keyworded links either. Google specifically looks for this kind of thing. It's in their list of banned link schemes. The kind of heavily keyworded link we saw a moment ago is really not a good idea, as it's so obviously an SEO game. Now, what kind of links are these? Well, in this example, the links are actually no follow links. But that's OK. Many forum links are not. Many forum links are follow links. Forum software systems are far less likely to tag links as no follow links than blog software is, in particular with the older systems, often forums that have been around for years and built popularity. Overall, you'll find that a very large proportion of the links, perhaps even most, are follow links. And in any case, remember how I found this forum? I found it in the search results. Forum messages often do come up in search results. People find them, they read the message, and may come to your site. Also, there are the forum members to consider. This forum has thousands of members, millions of posts generated over the years. It's a genuine, popular forum, and your messages can be found and read by members. So, I'm not suggesting that you post fake messages or that you abuse the forums. What I am saying, though, is that the people you want to reach are in these forums, and you can build a relationship with them. There's nothing wrong with marketing through forums, as long as it's not done in a spammy, obnoxious way. And some of the links you generate are going to help your SEO efforts. This is a sensitive subject. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the issue of buying links. Paying someone to place a link on their site pointing to yours so that your site gets a boost in the search engine. I'll explain the concept and also explain why the search engines hate it, despite having encouraged it for years. The concept is, of course, pretty simple. An entire industry built up around link building, services designed to help you get links. And while sometimes the services are couched in terms that make it sound like these aren't really purchase links, in most cases they are. Link companies often want it to look like you're paying for a service, not a link. You're paying for someone to dig around on the web, trying to find people who really want to link to you, and then arranging for those links to be placed. Of course, this is almost always nonsense, and here are three clues. If the site is charging you for links by the month, then clearly if you stop paying, you lose the link. So obviously it was the money that encouraged the site owner to link to you, not your great site. And if the link is charging a few cents a link, or even a few dollars a link, or is charging a price that goes up depending on page rank, the link company is selling the link. You're not paying for the work it took to find the site to link to you. Oh, a couple more clues. If the service has a directory of sites wanting to place links, obviously these are people who are trying to make money. And if the sites want to remain anonymous, well, come on, it's obvious, isn't it? Now, the search engines don't like people buying links. Why? Well, think about what the search engines are trying to achieve. When you go to Google, Yahoo or Bing and search for rabbit hutch, you want results related to those keywords and the search engines want to provide you with the best results. If they provide bad results, eventually you'll stop coming back. So they want to make sure they provide results to you that are a really good match for your keywords, not merely results based on how much websites are willing to pay to get the links pointing to them. So purchase links prove nothing about the quality of your site, and therefore search engines regard them as link manipulation. Google hates purchase links so much that it provides a mechanism through which anyone can report sites that either buy or sell links. Over the years, the search engines, in particular Google, have become really good at identifying purchase links pointing to websites. By encouraging site owners to report bad links to them, and through the use of various secret algorithmic techniques, I'm sure, Google has identified many sites and networks of sites that sell links and in many cases has blocked them, even dropped them from the index totally. Now, I need to make the point that the search engines are not against the buying and selling of links per se. They are against the buying and selling of links for the purpose of manipulating search results. In other words, they're not against the advertising business. They just don't want people selling a link and placing the link in such a manner 
that the search engines can't tell it's an ad. In particular, they want people to use the nofollow value of the rel attribute to make it quite clear that the link should not be used for search engine optimization purposes. I also want to make the point that the search engines encouraged link building. People bought links because it worked. It was hard to stop businesses in a competitive market. Seeing competitors profiting from traffic to their sites from the search engines, created because they purchased links, hard to stop them from doing the same thing, from saying, if you can't beat them, join them. And that's just what hundreds of thousands of businesses did. They bought links because it worked, because they felt they had to in order to keep up. As I said elsewhere in this course, the mistake the search engines made was allowing this to go on too long, not fixing the problem sooner. And Google, at least, has admitted to this mistake. Does buying links work today? Yes, it does. Much of the business has gone, but there are still plenty of companies selling links, and some are undoubtedly doing it successfully. If it's done discreetly, it's very possible to get away with it. But it's not necessarily a great strategy. One problem is that you don't know if the links you buy today will work tomorrow. In fact, because of the nature of SEO, it's often hard to know what you did that gave you a bump in the search results. I'm sure a lot of purchase links don't even work today. Many sites have seen drops in search results when the links they'd bought earlier stopped working because Google devalued them. Then there's the probably limited chance of having your site penalized by the search engines. If Google, for instance, determines that you have a lot of purchase links pointing your site and believes that the site owner or manager must have been involved in the purchase, then they will penalize the site. The site can drop in the search results and even be dropped from the index in extreme cases. I say limited chance because in most cases sites buying links are not penalized. Certainly the incoming links can be devalued resulting in a drop in the search results, but that's not a true penalty. That's just a case in which what you used to do doesn't work anymore. Why don't the search engines penalize sites with bad links pointing to them? Well, if they did, what's to stop me buying a bunch of garbage links and pointing to your site in order to knock you out of the search engines? That's not to say sites are never penalized, they are. Mostly it's when Google discovers some evidence linking the site to the link purchases, such as when it finds outgoing links to what is known as a link farm, kind of reciprocal linking system on steroids. There is, within the SEO business, constant debate as to the reality of negative SEO, attacking competitors through the use of garbage links. The search engines are well aware of negative SEO and claim they do everything to avoid it. And it does seem that in most cases, sites with incoming links that were purchased are not penalized. The site selling the link is the one that gets hurt. In this lesson, I'm going to describe the ideal link method, though not necessarily the easiest. This method is recommended by Google, recommended by many in the SEO business, and yet perhaps the least often used, link bait. The ironic thing is that link bait sounds like some kind of trick, but it's really not. Link bait means that you create something on your website that people want to link to. The content attracts links, like the bait on a hook attracts a fish. It might be something interesting, funny, entertaining, useful. Whatever it is, people want to link to it. So if you let a small number of people know about it, they link to it, then others find it, and they link to it, and so on. Another term might be viral links. In effect, once the content is released to the world, the content itself generates links without you having to do much about it. What is this content? Well, it could be text, of course an interesting article perhaps. But in this context, it could also be video perhaps, or audio, or animation, an infographic maybe, or anything else you can put in a web page. We're not talking about on-page optimization now, we're talking about off-page and getting people to link to your site. So the bait itself doesn't have to be text. Examples are easy to come by. Any successful news or article site is, in effect, publishing link bait. Not every article gets linked to, but some will strike a nerve. People will link, others will follow the links and link on their own sites and blogs and so on. Of course, this is really hard to do for most websites. If you're selling rabbit hutches, what can you do that is so interesting, funny, entertaining or useful that people will start linking to it? Well, with a little thought, you might be able to come up with something. 
I'm not in the rabbit hutch business. In fact, I know little to nothing about rabbits. But perhaps your site could have a directory of rabbit breeders. Maybe you could try content curation in which you gather snippets of information from around the web, things that you know people are going to find interesting, linking back to the source sites. You could become a center of rabbit-related news. Maybe an illustrated guide to the dozens of different species of rabbits and cavies. Maybe you could set up classified ad software and allow rabbit lovers to sell things to other rabbit lovers. Whatever it is rabbit lovers may have to sell, I don't know. Or perhaps you could set up rabbit forums and become a popular place for rabbit owners to hang out and chat with each other. Perhaps you could host a video library, allowing rabbit lovers to post videos of their pets. Or maybe you could create a library of high-quality articles about rabbits, even opening the library up to other people to post their work. With a little thought, you may be able to come up with something. And once you have, you need to let people know about it. Announce in social media and forums. Ask friends and colleagues to tell their friends and colleagues, and so on. You have to prime the pump to let people know about it so they'll start linking to it. And if it is really enticing in some way, the links will start rolling in. So, yes, you may be able to create link bait, but in many cases, sites don't need to. As I've discussed before, it often comes down to the competitiveness of your market. Many sites can use the techniques I've described earlier and get plenty enough links without getting into the link bait business, without having to come up with something so cool that the page itself just generates links for itself. On the other hand, this lesson is in a section called When You Still Need Links. So if you still need links, well, maybe you do need link bait. Link building has changed greatly over the last few years, as the search engines have become better and better at placing a value on links. It's no longer so easy to just buy a bunch of links and see your site rise in the ranks. It used to work. It used to work well, but it's much less reliable and much riskier these days. My belief is that link building is moving more towards a PR, a public relations model. Rather than faking links, the best method is to have people link to you because you have something worth linking to. Now, before I move on, I need to make the point again that for many businesses, the low-hanging fruit I described earlier is enough, or perhaps the low-hanging fruit along with a few other basic techniques, such as discussion groups, and finding out where your competitors are getting links and following suit. But if you need more than this, if you don't have the search ranks you want, then you have to dig deeper, and you should seriously consider a PR approach. What do I mean by this? Well, forget about the internet right now. PR has been around a long, long time. In the 1990s, PR meant that you got the media to talk about you. You got newspapers, magazines, radio, TV, and newsletters to talk about you. You came up with some kind of story, a hook as it's often known, and you used that hook to catch writers, editors and producers to get them interested in you and your business. The basic idea is that they need content. Bloggers need to write about something. Magazines and newspapers need articles. Without content, they're out of business. Good PR people think of their job as helping these people. They need a story and the PR person has a story. So it's a mutually beneficial relationship. And in fact, good PR people spend years building relationships with these writers, editors and producers. Today, the overall process is the same. There are still newspapers, magazines, radio, TV, newsletters, but they now all have websites too. But there's more. There are now blogs, both amateur and professional, online publications such as Huffington Post and Slate, a multitude of websites catering to every conceivable interest, and so on. So here's how I explain a PR campaign to my clients. I start by asking them what their USP is, their unique selling proposition. What makes them special, different? Why would people care about their website? In the case of e-commerce sites, I'll often ask, why would somebody buy from you rather than Amazon? Now, if you can't answer these questions, you've got a problem, not just for your PR campaign, but also for your entire business. If your answer is effectively, well, I'm selling widgets, you're in trouble because lots of people sell widgets online. They don't have to buy from you. But let's say you can answer this question. 
Perhaps the answer is we sell the widest selection of handmade rabbit hutches on the planet at better prices than anyone. This could be the basis of your hook, the message you're going to use to approach these writers and editors. Of course, you now need to find your targets. It's a good idea to build a list of sites that can be useful to you. Find blogs that write about your industry, people writing for magazine sites and newspapers, and so on. Perhaps create a spreadsheet or use a contact management system to store the information. You want to collect the name of the site, the URL, the name of the writer or blogger, and contact information, an email address or a link to a contact page. Perhaps some notes about the type of site and content. If you have an e-commerce site, you could, for instance, note if a blogger has a list of places to buy the sort of things you sell. Pet blogs may contain lists of online pet stores. Knitting blogs often contain lists of places to buy wool online in the blog role, the list of useful links often found on the right side of the blog. You'll then want to contact these people. You mustn't send out something that appears to be boilerplate or spam. It needs to be personal and chatty introducing yourself and your idea. So, for instance, you might contact bloggers who write about your area of interest, and you could have several different approaches. Let's say you have an e-commerce store. You might contact blogs that have lists of places to buy the sort of products you sell and explain why you believe your store would be of interest to the bloggers' readers. You should probably send along a coupon with the message, too. Later, perhaps, you could contact the blogger again and suggest a particular story for the blog. Perhaps you're having a big sale, or maybe have some unusual new products in store, or perhaps have an article of interest to the blogger's readers. You might also suggest some kind of promotion. One of my clients was upset that a competitor, another company selling musical instruments, was ranking so well in the search results. We discovered that he had thousands of links created by promoting his monthly giveaway, each month, he would hold a drawing and give away several sets of strings and remind bloggers of the drawing, many of whom would link to his site. You could even suggest the giveaway for a particular blog. That blogger can tell his or her readers that your store is having a giveaway just for readers of that blog, or perhaps create a discount coupon especially for that blog. Of course, you won't want to do this with every blog you run across, but it's often possible to find lists of top blogs in particular subjects or just Google search for broad terms and see what blogs come up. They're likely to be popular. Of course, Linkbait, which I discussed in the previous lesson, works well with PR too. If you have some kind of useful or interesting content on your site, you can promote it through your PR contacts. PR campaigns can be very time consuming and you need to contact a lot of people. Don't get discouraged when you only get a small proportion of people responding. PR is a long-term project, something you build slowly and keep going consistently, perhaps a few contacts a week or a couple a day. You need a good story and persistence. Well done, you've reached the end of the course. I hope you've learned a lot and that you put what you've learned into action. For some of you, ranking your site is going to be easy. For others, in more competitive markets, it'll take more effort but these techniques do work if you actually use them. I'll be adding to this course here and there, and I'll let you know when I do. Keep in touch in the forums, and once again, well done and good luck with your SEO work. This is a presentation I gave at a business networking meeting in Denver in July of 2015. I was asked to talk about how SEO was evolving. Unfortunately, the sound is a little echoey, but I still think some students may find this useful as it's a way to get another look at how SEO fits together. This course looks at a lot of different individual aspects of SEO, while this presentation is more of a holistic look at SEO, how the different pieces work together. I began by discussing the two extremes in SEO these days. On the one hand, the idea that, bizarrely, SEO really doesn't matter anymore, that SEO is dead. And on the other hand, the idea that you only really need to focus on SEO. Go to most SEO consultants and that's what you'll hear. You won't hear anything about messaging or design or other forms of marketing, even when your problems lie in those areas. Hire an SEO consultant and you'll generally only hear about SEO, which is a bit of a problem. Anyway, 
I didn't turn the audio on until a minute or two into the presentation. So, here we go. Which is close to the truth? This one or this one? In fact, the black hat guys are closer to the truth than this one. This idea that SEO is dead is complete nonsense. Basic SEO is still very important and still does work. But it has changed, and it's changed a lot. Um, this is Jill Whalen. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's quite well known in the SEO world. I think these guys have probably heard of her. Uh, she's retired from the SEO world. And this fella who wrote this article said, in fact, he based this article, Top Four Reasons SEO is Dead. He starts off by talking about Jill Whalen, this well-known person in SEO, who says she's given up SEO because the, the tricks don't work anymore. Now, to that, I would respond, in fact, you can see there, the tricks to beat and spam, Google Whalen said no longer work as well. Well, SEO was never just about tricks. It was certainly about tricks. There were plenty of tricks. But it was never just about tricks. And this is something I would counter her argument with. And this is an email I received just a few days ago from an old client. Uh, I've talked to him a couple of times, literally a couple of hours uh, over the past couple of years, or maybe five hours or six hours. And um, so what are they saying? Two years ago, we were on the second search uh, engine results page. Uh, a year ago, we were towards the bottom of the first page. Now we're generally in the top three or four. So what did they do? What was so special? Well, nothing was particularly special. These guys used very basic SEO techniques. They, they didn't use a particularly intense uh, content campaign. Um, they didn't use any SEO tricks. They just used the basic SEO things, like putting, putting keywords in URLs, putting keywords in title tags, putting keywords in description tags, uh, putting keywords in eight, uh, heading tags. And of course, a big part of it is, is working with links pointing to the site, putting keywords in links. So this is, this week, it still works. It isn't over. This, by the way, I love this. I found this this afternoon on the interwebs. And uh, he's talking about, um, as you can see there, the number of times that people have said SEO is dead, I guess. He says, well, the first time people were saying search was dead was in 1997. I, I don't remember that, but, but maybe they were. But um, the most important thing I think here is, should you dismiss those who say SEO is dead to market themselves? So there's a lot of hype on the web by people who are marketing certain services. Um, and and you know, if you listen to the marketing messages, it, it can often be misleading. So it has changed a lot. SEO has changed a lot. And some of the things that used to work don't work anymore. I started in SEO, I don't know, 1999, um, 2000. In 2001, I had a little SEO team. I was VP of Web Solutions for um, ICNC. It used to be Rocky Mountain Internet. I don't know how many people remember that. Um, I, I used to not mention that because so many people hated Rocky Mountain Internet. But, uh, it's a long time now, so I don't care anymore. Um, but I had a little team of SEO people back in 2001. Uh, and then in 2003, I wrote SEO for Dummies. So I've been involved, in, and I've done six editions so far. This finishes six editions. So I've been involved in SEO a long time. And um, I, I've seen the full evolution. I've seen it change. And so there are things that have changed. So some of these things. Uh, we, I used to do, it was a lot of fun. Well, one thing is the mass content creation. We, we, we built these scripts where you would kind of feed the script a lot of keywords, and then you'd click on a button, and it would create literally thousands of web pages in a few minutes. It was fantastic, it was a lot of fun. And you could say, I want 20 different websites, and uh, for each website, you feed it a couple of hundred keywords. Have you, you're nodding your head. Have you, have you seen this? Have you done this? You haven't done it. <laughs> So, but it was, it was a lot of fun, and actually it worked very well. And then you would take these websites and you would post them on different hosting accounts, and, and um, it was sort of a naughty trick. But JavaScript redirects, I had a client who wanted to do this. I have no idea why. He just thought it would be fun to see if he could trick Google. And so we built JavaScript redirects, which is where you build a page with lots of nice keywords, and then you have a JavaScript redirect onto the regular website. So the search engine sees one thing, and and the user sees another. I don't know why I'm admitting all this stuff now. I guess I don't care anymore. 
But um, that was kind of fun. It wasn't my idea. I can say it wasn't my idea. It was my client's idea. He wanted to do it, so we, so we did it. Uh, duplicated pages, that, that experiment didn't work so well. That's where you take a page and then you just change out the name of the city. So you'd have a thousand pages for a thousand different cities, exactly the same page, but the city name would be different, the city and state would be different. Um, it did work for a little while, but then but it stopped pretty quickly. Uh, content syndication and press releases. Content syndication, you, you may have seen the article libraries. You can write an article and submit it to a library or submit it to 500 different libraries and hope that, that it gets picked up. And, and press releases, um, press releases used to work incredibly well. They don't work, work as well uh, anymore. Um, in fact, people will tell you if you do press releases and put links to your website, your site will get penalized. You know, there's a lot of nonsense, but, uh, but they definitely don't work as well as they used to work. Um, but it was never all about SEO. I never thought it was about just about SEO. So I've been doing e-commerce consulting uh, for at least a decade, probably maybe 11, 12 years. And um, to me, SEO was important. And because I'd written the book, I got a lot of people calling me saying I need consulting help. And so typically, my consulting would begin with SEO. But it was never all about SEO uh, because the first problem is if you just focus on SEO and you create a garbage website, and, and I mean, this isn't an unusual thing. Many people have done this. They create garbage websites. Um, it, you're not going to convert. People are not going to want to buy from you. How many of you remember this? Who's seen this? You remember the flaming text? You used to see it in the late 90s, early 2000s. I had a client in 2006 who came to me with a website. And right at the top of the site, it was black like this. It was a black background. And the company name was at the top when it was burning like that. It was awesome. And um, this, this guy sold heavy industrial equipment. You probably know who it is. I'm not going to say who it is. But he sold heavy industrial equipment. He was a real company. Um, and in, who built it? his warehouse manager built the, where, he built the website. And, and it looked like the website had been built by the warehouse manager. And, and that's what he had on the site. And uh, he, they come to me and they say, we need SEO traffic. We need search engine traffic urgently because we're not doing enough business. They were doing about $10,000 a month. So I went to the website and I saw this thing. Obviously, I couldn't put the road button on there. And, uh, and I called them back and I said, no, 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 you don't need search engine traffic. You need a new website. And in fact, we, we, this is like 2006. We rebuilt the website. And instantly, literally the same day we launched the website, we started doing more business. The business just went through the roof. And he called me back and he said, I don't know what you've done in the search engines, but the, the phone's ringing off the hook. And I said, I haven't done anything in the search engines. We just redesigned the site. And so what had happened was he was getting traffic to his site. Nobody, well, very few people would call him. $10,000 a month for his the average order is like $1,500 a month or something. So I don't know, he was doing five, six, seven orders a month. He had the traffic, but nobody wanted to talk, almost nobody wanted to talk to him. So that's one reason it's not just about SEO. Um, another reason it's not just about SEO is because a lot of search activity actually isn't through the major search engines. It goes through, oops, I'm jumping too far. It goes through Amazon and Craigslist and eBay it goes through the shopping directories, um, it, and, and a lot of the content, even on the search engines, a lot of the content is coming out of the search engine's own shopping directories. Um, like so on Google now, if you search for rabbit hutch, you're gonna see some pictures and it'll say shopping for rabbit hutches. That's a totally different index. SEO won't help you in that index. So, uh, and pay-per-click, those are actually sort of ancillary, it's an ancillary service to Google AdWords. Um, so if you focus purely on SEO, you're missing an enormous amount of the traffic. More product searches or more, more product search results are delivered through these services than are delivered from the major search engine organic indexes. So focus on SEO and you're missing out on this stuff. And the other thing is search isn't the only thing people are doing online. Search is kind of an easy thing. Um, well, in theory, it's an easy thing. It seems to be an easy thing when you first start. Um, 
and so everybody wants to do it, and everybody thinks, well, that's where, where, you know, that's where people are, and we gather traffic through the search engines. But of course, people spend more time online doing other things than they do uh, just a Google searching. So if you focus on SEO, you're missing out uh, on, on these other things, on the social networking, on the forums, and, uh, and everything else that's going on. So if you do focus purely on SEO, you're wasting the traffic because, uh, like this guy with a flaming name, um, he had traffic, he just wasn't converting it. So you're wasting the traffic if that's all you care about, your SEO. And also you're putting all your eggs in one basket. And, and you can really get hurt, and I've seen companies hurt, when Google changes how they manage something. Um, they, they change the algorithm a little, and all of a sudden your website drops. And so, um, you know, you've got all your eggs in one basket and you just focus on SEO. And of course, you're missing those opportunities, uh, these other places that people are hanging out if you focus purely on SEO. I had a guy a few years ago come to me um, looking for SEO help, and he already had a multi-million dollar business, but he, he wanted to add on SEO, which is a great strategy, he should have. Uh, but um, he was already doing millions of dollars selling uh, parts for Miatas, you know, the little Miata sports car. And uh, it was all what, what I used to call back in the day, it was community marketing, I used to call it, and that's before you know, social marketing, social networking, social marketing, I guess is the phrase now. But I used to call it community marketing before that phrase was popular. But that's how he was doing a million or two a year in Miata parts, and it was all through uh, forums discussion groups. So um, you know, focusing on SEO, I think, is a, is, a, is a big mistake. You're missing the big picture. You're just picking a little piece of it. An important, an important piece, but nonetheless a little, a little piece of it. Um, you're missing the big piece of it. So, so, there's a lot of, so coming back to the evolution, there's all this talk now about um, SEO doesn't matter so much, and you need to focus on content and you need to focus on your website, what's going on on the website, forget about links, all these sorts of things. Well, my consulting always was involved, and I, I don't think that's a new idea. It's sort of a new, because it's new because there's a lot of talk about it now, but, um, but the ideas were still there. Some of us were talking about these things. You need to talk about site design. You don't want the flaming letters. You need to talk about messaging, and you, I'll get to messaging in a minute. You need to talk about usability and um, PR, we'll come to PR, and various other marketing techniques. So I would have people come to me and say, we want SEO traffic, and I would say, no, you don't, you should be doing this. Um, I would occasionally have people come to me and say, help me um, get more traffic to my website, and I would say, you shouldn't be in business. Um, so, but, so well, if you find somebody who just doesn't know what they're doing at all, I don't, I'll tell them, you, know, you haven't told me anything, that indicates you're going to make a success of this business, and I'll tell people just to get out of the business. I did have one guy who came to me and he wanted to build, well, he, he had already built a, um, a gift, an e commerce gift shop. It was, it was like just gifts, like baskets and so on. And um, I said to him, Well, why would I buy from you instead of Amazon? And he didn't have an answer to that question. And in fact, these are the sorts of questions you should be asking, really. If you want to set up a little store, um, let's say you're selling rabbit hutches, why would somebody buy from you rather than Amazon? And, and there, is, there are answers to that question. But if you don't know the answer, then you've got real problems. And this guy didn't know the answer. And, um, and I said to him, well, what is it you're good at? And he said to me, I've been a buyer. My whole career, I've been a buyer. I know how to buy stuff. And I know how to get good, good products at great prices. And I said to him, then forget the store. Get rid of your online store. Buy it and sell it through Amazon. Uh, Amazon, that's another channel that, that people very rarely talk about. Um, about 40% of everything Amazon sells doesn't belong to Amazon. It's sold by third-party merchants. And so this guy was too focused. He was focusing on his own website, and he wanted me to help him bring search engine traffic in. And my answer was, A, you don't need search engine traffic, and B, you, you probably shouldn't have a website. Um, so I think so. You, you have to kind of broaden your view of things and not get too hung up on SEO. But what, we're, what I'm going to say pretty soon is SEO still does work, and 
should be using it. I bet that. <laughs> so no, but my my point here is that there's all this talk now about forget about SEO. It doesn't matter. And I, what I'm saying is, um, I've I've kind of been saying that all the years, it, all these years, except. I, I don't agree with the extreme where you say SEO doesn't work. All I'm saying is it's one option, it's one weapon in the arsenal, and and you need to you know look at the look at the big picture. So there is no smoke without fire. Why are people talking about this? Why are people saying SEO is dead? Well, there have been some really dramatic changes in the search engines in the last couple of years, in particular in the area of linking. I think. Um, but we'll come back to that. The link game is much harder to play now than it used to be. Um, actually, in some senses, it's harder to play. In, in other senses, it, it's, um, it's harder to trick the search engines with linking now. Um, but that does mean, in, in some senses, it's getting easier because you don't need thousands of links. I used to have competitive, uh, companies come to me and I'd look at their, their links, I'd look at the competitors' links, and the competitor would have 10,000 links. It's like, well, how do, you, how do you do that when you pay an Indian firm to, to give you links at 20 cents a link? But uh, so you don't have to play that game anymore, and that game doesn't work as well as it used to. Um, so some of these techniques simply don't work very well, and some don't work at all. So what are the basic claims? I think there are three claims about the, the evolution of... Um, of SEO, I don't know if this is, this is what you had in mind when you were saying it, but, but uh, this is what I think people are saying. I think they're saying it's all about content. Okay, I got a nod there, and I'll tell you why it's not in a minute. <laughs> uh, it's all about information architecture, which is which is sort of um, a contradiction. So you said it's all about content, but and then linking doesn't work. I think these are the three big things that people seem to be saying now, um, and I'll tell you why. At least, well, I'll tell you why they're all wrong. 